Stevatrix wants to know, can you look at these motors and let me know if they'd be okay on 4S? Uh, I actually have these motors. I have these motors on my Vanny style 03 build. Um, they're fine. Uh, in my opinion, they're a little bit much for five inch. Um, they're a little bit much for five inch. But what size prop? I mean, they're intended for five inch props. Uh, I think that Chris Rosser's testing data has shown that there isn't much responsiveness advantage once you get to about 2207, 2208. Um, 2505.5, what's the volume of that? So that's 2698. Let's compare that to uh, 2207, just for comparison. So it's very similar in volume to a 2207 or maybe a 2207.5, but it's going to be a wider, flatter motor. So in general, a way to think about motors is that the torque the motor generates is proportional to the volume. A motor that is taller and narrower is going to be more responsive, and a motor that is wider and flatter is going to have better cooling. Because the wider, flatter motor, the mass is further from the axis of rotation. And so it has it's less responsive. It has a harder time accelerating. But it has a lot of surface area for air to go through it and get cooled. A motor that's narrower and taller is more responsive, but has a harder time with cooling. In this case, what we've got is a motor that is approximately, maybe a, a little bit larger than a 2207 in terms of its volume, but it's wider and flatter. But the quest, the question is, do 2207 motors need better cooling? And the answer is no, generally no. So I'm not sure I understand the design intent of this motor. My thinking, now obviously Farouk FPV, he's a great pilot and he flies them and likes how they fly. Um, but my thinking about how like a Spang motor would work is that you're going to want a very responsive motor because Spang requires a lot of sharp movements and very responsive uh, very responsive props. So it's odd to me that you would go to a wider, flatter motor when you want more responsiveness. Um, so that that doesn't mean like that I, you know, that's a question. It's not an answer and it's not a statement. Um, my answer about this motor is similar, excuse me, to my answer about a lot of motors. It's a $28 motor. There are exceptional motors available in the $22-ish dollar price point, 23. Uh, when you buy a motor like this and you're paying $28 for it, you have to really want that specific motor and something that it's bringing to the table. And I, I, I'm not sure what that is with this motor. Like what's really unique about, it looks like a fine motor. But what we've got here, I think, is a, a, a 23 or $24 motor with a, a premium put on it because it's got a pilot's name on it. Um, and it's not, I'm not saying that as like, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just saying that's how motors often work and you're paying a premium for the fact that it's got a pilot's name on it. It is an unusual size, but I don't actually think the unusual size is actually giving you better performance in a way that you would really need. Um, so any, uh, Blunty, I don't see you having pinned any comments. I'm, I was hoping that maybe someone would be like, Bardwell doesn't know what he's talking about. The reason this motor is special is, ah, no, not really. There's a couple of people that mentioned the FPV cycle, 25 millimeter motors are great. So these should be great too. Uh, the FPV cycle 25 millimeter motors are, uh, what's their, what's their size? They're 25 by, I don't know if anyone, I think they're taller. Just visibly, they look taller. Um, I'm, I'm not, if you look at, like, I'm the kind of guy who, if I have an, if I fly a motor and I think I have an experience and then somebody shows me test stand data that contradicts my experience, I'm going to be really quick to go, mm, I guess that was placebo. I am not sure. Because I know 
how I've, I've done a B testing with motors and I know how difficult it is to really notice the difference between subtle things. You fly the motors and you think you notice the difference unless you are a very exceptional pilot who can like, if you're a racing pilot like Alex Vanover or, or any of those top racers who can put in laps with one tenth of a second per consistency and you say you notice a difference in the motors, maybe I start to believe you. But for a typical guy like me, I fly, I flew those 25 millimeter motors. I thought I noticed some things about them. I, uh, Chris Rosser tested the motors and some of the things that people said about them turned out not to be true, at least on the bench. And at that point, I'm I'm quick to revise my opinion and maybe have second thoughts about expressing such a strong opinion in the future. Um, if you like the 25 millimeter FPV cycle motors, these seem like they're similar in that they're uh, they're but they're 25 millimeter, but a little smaller in volume. Um, but if you just look at bench testing those larger motors don't really benefit in terms of responsiveness uh, from their additional volume. They said essentially a 2207 to 2207.5-ish motor, then that volume has enough torque to accelerate a prop, pretty much a five-inch prop, pretty much as fast as it needs to accelerate and bigger motors are kind of wasted. Um, Obando says, most YouTubers do not test a motor with more than three flights. Yeah, um, and I again, I, I I hesitate to name names or point fingers, but I think that there's a lot of people out there who are quote unquote reviewing motors, and all they do is they put the motors on a quad and they rip it and they go, yeah, I like it. And I think that if you if you look at the test data that Chris Rosser is putting out, where he shows. The things he shows about the motors are true. You could make an argument, oh, the test stand isn't perfect to real life, and there's other things that his tests don't incorporate, and maybe that argument is true. But the, the things he says about the motors are true. So if he says a motor is more efficient, it's more efficient. If he says a motor is more responsive, it's more responsive. And a lot of times, I think the differences between the motors on the test stand are fairly subtle. Subtle enough that I'm skeptical, like... Has anyone ever reviewed Mr. Steele's The Ethics Motors and said, these motors are underpowered? I don't know. Maybe they have. But lots of people review those motors and they go, oh, they're so smooth. They're blah, 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 blah. We put Chris Rosser tests them and they are significantly underpowered compared to all the other motors he tests. Why did no one, why did no one, okay, I shouldn't say no one because the chat's going to pop up somebody who said it. But you see what I'm getting at? If 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 I ripped this motor and I detected what was up with it was accurate, then everybody who flew that motor would be like, oh, this motor's underpowered. Hmm. Make your life easy. Just go with T motors. T motors are good motors, very good motors, pretty expensive. But but solid motors like they they arguably justify their price. Buy eight twelve dollar motors and rip it. That's the other way to go. Absolutely. One IFPV says, is Chris Rosser's testing peer reviewed? Are other people getting the same test results he gets or is no one else doing the testing? One I, I don't know anyone else who is doing the testing Chris Rosser is doing. Well, one of the reasons for that is Chris has equipment that no one else has. So he tests his motors, not just with a thrust stand, but also with a, uh, basically like a, what's the thing you put a, a dynamometer, a, uh, Basically, it's like, a, you know, when they test cars to see how much horsepower they've got. What's that thing called? I'm blanking. So he's got like a flywheel. He doesn't use a prop to test the motor responsiveness. He puts a big weight on it with a flywheel. And basically, he's testing motors in ways that no one else does. Um, it, it, the, the gold, I mean, the gold standard for testing would be that Chris, like if I were to criticize Chris Ross's testing, the number one criticism I would level at it is, that he only tests one of each motor, as far as I know. And there's manufacturing variants, right? They're, they're absolutely, like I've, I've taken 16 of a given motor and measured the KV of the motor using a multimeter to measure the, the, the voltage and found as much as plus or minus 50 KV of difference between the motors. Would that make a difference in Chris Rosser's testing? 1,000% it would. 
But he, as far as I know, gets a motor, he gets one of each motor and he tests them. Because I've never seen a test he did where he tested 30 of a single motor and, and looked at the variance. Well, a truly representative scientific test would test 20 or 30 of each motor randomly sampled off the assembly line. No one's going to do that. No one's going to do that. That's just too much effort for the for the risk for the value of the results you get. So no one's peer reviewing Chris Rosser's testing, and it would be nice if they did, but we just don't have people who are doing that. And we don't, you know, that's just where we're at. We just have to hope that he's doing it right and getting good results. To me, the 25 millimeter FPV cycles have very smooth low range. That's the kind of thing people say. I mean, if you like them, by all means, fly them. Anyway, um, yeah, a license to drive says even just the difference in the motor's sound can influence you. Uh, interesting you say that, license to drive. Uh, there's a video I shot with Ciotti that I never released. I still have the footage, and maybe someday I'll put it out. I don't know. At this point, probably not. He and I tested three identical quads with three different motors on them. Significantly different motors. Like one was like a 2506, one was like a, a 2207.5 or something. I don't know. Three different motors. And one of the things we debated was whether we should be allowed to hear the motors. And we decided that if we wanted to truly do a test of how they fly and how they feel, we shouldn't hear the motors. So we actually put earplugs in and played music so we couldn't hear the motors. And we couldn't tell them apart reliably, barely at all. We were just no, we were just guessing. Um, was that the right thing to do? I don't know. How do you know what you want from a motor? Exactly. Um, so anyway, we could rant about motor testing all night, but let's not. <laughs> 